Ladies and gentlemen, this is mock draft number 12. Super pumped. We're, we're finally getting down to it. The draft order is starting to get solidified a bit. Um, speaking of, the mock draft is from a week ago. I'm going to say this about 10 times in a row so that we all understand it. I don't want to see any comments about the draft order. I did this. Let's see. Today is the second. Today is the second. I did this like five days ago. Okay? It takes me a long time to make these videos. I'm just, I'm just telling you now, please do not put in the comments section that the draft order is wrong. Please don't do that. Otherwise, um, if you wouldn't mind jumping in the comment section with some constructive information in terms of your team and your thoughts on the pick and all that stuff, because I've been learning a lot from you guys. Um, otherwise, if you wouldn't mind liking the video, that would be fantastic. If that's you know, the, if you want to show your displeasure, do it in the comment section. But still, drop me a like because I'm working real hard to get the the picks right for your team. I've learned a lot from you. I'm doing all this stuff. Um, that would just be greatly appreciated. But uh, otherwise, I think that's it. Oh, I keep forgetting to plug it. Fan to Fan Network. Go check it out. Great network. Now let's get started. With the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. I was actually surprised. Um, talked with a guy recently and uh, was trying to get excited for him. Like, hey, you guys are getting Trevor on. He lost it. He does not want Trevor Lawrence. He says, we put him in there. He's just going to get ruined. You know, we gotta. We, we should get Penny Sewell, and we should build this team up. I just was kind of taken aback by that. I hadn't heard that before. I thought I was just opening the conversation. You know, it's kind of like when you say, hey, good morning, and you just assume they're going to say good morning, and they say other things. It's kind of like that. But um, I guess let me know in the comment section if you disagree with the pick or if you feel uh, slightly differently about it. But I feel like this is pretty much a slam dunk Trevor Lawrence to the Jaguars. With the second overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. So I'm, I'm actually glad because it used to be set in stone the first three picks and it was kind of getting boring. There's maybe a little controversy on the first pick, but starting with the second pick, it's blown wide open. Uh, Jets fans, some of them really want Zach Wilson. Some of them still want Justin Fields. Some of them want Penny Sewell. Lots of them want to trade back. I mean, that... The comments, it's funny because everyone's going to say, you're an idiot, we should do this. Go look at your own, go look at the comment section at your own fan base. You guys can't even agree on what you want to do. Um, so I, I, I don't really know the best scenario. I, I understand that there's a sentiment that we should keep Sam Darnold, that he basically is just playing with awful, you know, coordinators, coaches, whatnot. He's a talented guy. We just need to build around him. All right. I mean, I, I don't know that I... I know that to be the case, but I could see why that might be the case, and I could see that as a strategy. Either way, it's a bold strategy, right? Moving on from Darnold, drafting Zach, not drafting Zach, drafting Joe. I mean, it's the Jets are not in a great position, and trading back is extremely risky as well because if any of these quarterbacks become great quarterbacks, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, any of them, and you had the opportunity to draft them and instead you drafted back and got like a tackle or something, you're going to get wrecked forever. Although, you know, I'm sure as Jets fans you're used to screaming at your own team and whatnot but um that's a tough spot to be in i, I i'm still of the mind you got to draft a quarterback so that's what we're going to do but again comment section let me know with the third overall pick in the 2021 draft the miami dolphins thanks to their best friend in the world the houston texans are going to accept a trade from the cincinnati Bengals. the Bengals are going to move up from pick five back up to pick three where they've been the whole time um they're going to offer up a 2022 first round pick as well as a 2021 second round pick, pick 38 overall. The Dolphins are going to accept that. And with the third overall pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. So I, again, I mean, it's it kind of sucks because I was just starting to get into a rhythm of what everybody wants, and now it's kind of everything's shuffled and it gets confusing. So Dolphins fans, look, the only reason I didn't take Panay Sewell, not that I think you have the greatest tackles in the world, but we just drafted two early round tackles. Are we giving up on them already? Um, maybe, maybe we do. I don't know. But when you start talking about sweetening the pot with now we have two first round picks, one of them is a still a top five pick. We're picking at five. Um, we have, I believe, two second round picks and or now now we have three second round picks and then next year we have two first round picks. Look, I'm, I'm taking the deal. I just am. Um, if you disagree, again, jump in the comment section. And from the Bengals standpoint, it's simple. I mean, we saw our quarterback, who is a very talented guy, go down. Uh, similar to what that guy mentioned about the Jaguars, it doesn't do any good to bring in a quarterback just to ruin his career because he gets, you know, gun shy and he's freaking out. Is my camera glitching out? 
or is that, I hope that's not doing that live. Um, anyways, uh, lost my train of thought. It, 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 you, you can't, you got the quarterback, now you got to protect him. It's very simple. So, Penny Sewell to the Bengals. All right, I think I fixed the camera. Looks like everything's going good. With the fourth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. What, what, this is what you got to love about the draft, man. Regardless of what you think about the picks or anything else, you got to love this. Um, I mean, Justin Fields was a lock number two like a week ago. And now all of a sudden, it's like, I feel like Falcon fans are going to say, no, he's a bust, right? All of a sudden, nobody likes Justin Fields, and he's falling. Whereas two weeks ago, this would have been, people would have set him out of my mind. Is it? It's doing it again. Anyways, again, I'm still iffy on the Falcons getting a quarterback necessarily, but I do feel like, you know, if we're going to start this franchise kind of building from the ground up, we, we got to, at some point, move in a different direction. Um, it's probably going to take some time to rebuild this all the way up. In other words, I don't know that we're Super Bowl contenders immediately in 2021 especially with with you know justin fields probably sitting on the bench so we're the same team anyways but um i mean we're just we're just building in that direction i guess uh again jump in the comment section and let me know i'm, I'm surprised at the overall consensus that we need a quarterback because i don't think matt ryan is the issue there but um if it's just forget it let's just blow it up and start over then all right i guess that's what we're doing so justin fields to the falcons with the fifth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins, who are back on the clock, select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. It's kind of strange because if you look at, for example, the... That's really starting to annoy me with the stupid camera. If you look at the comment section and whatnot and, and just the general draft community, it seems as though other wide receivers are coming up and Chase is, is falling a bit. But that doesn't necessarily seem to be the case in terms of, again, I'm using a consensus big board. I build this big board based on what everybody else is saying out there um, with the, the, the big boards, right? CBS, ESPN, Tankathon, Draft Tech, all the, the big boards that are out there, I just average it out. Chase is moving up the boards. So um, as the board stands right now, Jamar Chase is the number three overall prospect in the entire uh draft now it maybe it's just because he didn't play and so there's people forget how talented he is but uh, here we sit with the potential top three best player in the draft we definitely need a wide receiver we just picked up a ton more draft capital and we're still getting an elite wide receiver i don't know that it's a slam dunk but it's it feels real good so jamar chase to the dolphins with the sixth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. Generally for the Eagles, it comes down to Jamar Chase or Micah Parsons. That that generally seems to be the consensus with Eagles fans as well as just anything else that I'm looking at. And so with Jamar Chase going, that makes this kind of easy. I would love it if you want to jump in the comments section, give me some other thoughts. Clearly there are other wide receivers that could become um, an option, but there are also people saying, I think Jalen Rager is going to be a good wide receiver, so we don't necessarily need... Whatever, right? It's just it's just opinions. I, I know everybody acts like they know 100%, but nobody knows, right? But I am curious what it is you think about it. Clearly we could use the linebacker help. Micah Parsons is... Um, I mean, he's just one of those rare athletic type of people I mean he's not the most elite linebacker we've ever seen in our lives I feel like every year we say that about a guy like Isaiah Simmons or Roquan or whoever um, but still there are only so many people linebackers tough because you have to be sort of like a, a safety or corner slash defensive tackle hybrid right you got to play the run and play cut it's just very few human beings have that ability and so when you find a guy that's as, as athletic and talented as he is um it's pretty rare, and so you can understand why guys take linebackers this early. So Micah Parsons to the Eagles at 6. With the 7th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. Um, Rousseau is one of about 4 or 5 guys that are going to get drafted um, that in my mind are falling rapidly down the board to a point where I don't really feel comfortable taking them. I don't think he goes this early in the actual draft, but again, I'm trying to stick to the board at this point in time. There's a lot of reshuffling going on. Guys are just now starting to turn on tape. You know, some of these these teams are ju we're just starting to hear rumors about what so and so thinks, and that's drastically changing big boards everywhere. Um, and I think Rousseau is going to be a guy that that probably falls quite a bit. But at this point in time, he's still the top guy, 
and the Detroit Lions need a lot of help on defense. So we're going to take Gregory Rousseau um, and hopefully get a lot more pressure off the edge. I mean, it's, it's hard to project teams that are just blowing things up and starting over, but one thing I know for sure is they're going to need a better defensive line, and so we're taking the top edge guy in the class in Gregory Rousseau. With the eighth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. I'm excited about this pick, man. I really am. I've, I've been wanting Kyle Pitts to go top 10 for a while because he's, I mean, you look at, there's been several guys that have gone top 10 that are tight ends. Um, I don't think any of them were as good as as Kyle Pitts. TJ Hawkinson wasn't um, Kyle Pitts. Um, the only reason that was that hard to do is most people, when you draft tight ends to their team, they get upset. But go look at the comment section from Giants fans. They want Kyle Pitts badly. The other thing is we need to bring weapons to to the New York Giants. So this this it just checks all the boxes. I get Kyle Pitts in the top 10. The fan base loves Kyle Pitts. We need to add a weapon, and we add an elite weapon in Kyle Pitts. It's It really is kind of a perfect fit. I think if the Giants fall in that late top 10 range, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, I think that's prime Kyle Pitts territory. So um, we'll see how it goes, but I, I really like this fit, and we got to see how it shakes out. But, but I feel like this is going to be a pick – for several mocks coming up. Watch the Giants mess up and get into the playoffs. <laughs> uh, with the ninth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. I mean, we've done this several times. It really just kind of comes down to where the board falls um, and where the Panthers end up. I think they're in prime, you know, second-tier quarterback territory between Trey Lance and or, uh, you know, maybe Mac or Trask or wherever. We got to see where these guys kind of end up. Right now, they're kind of late first prospects. But um, I think this is kind of prime territory for it. I think the fan base is ready for it to move on. And, and, and again, I just I like the Trey Lance fit in Carolina. You know, where we've got a – granted, he, he never really had a quarterback like Trey Lance, but we got a college coach, right? He came from the college ranks. Um, you know, we got Christian McCaffrey. We used to have Cam Newton. So to have a mobile guy with a big cannon arm, it just feels like the right fit, right? Just like Brian Burns going to Carolina made sense. His brother went there. It was like, as soon as I found that out, I was like, you know what? That's the that's where he needs to go, and that's where he went. I feel that way with Trey Lance. Like, it just feels like he should go to Carolina. Let's just pencil it in, right? I'm good with it. Trey Lance to the Panthers. With the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select... Patrick Sertain, cornerback, Alabama. By the way, I pronounce a lot of these guys' names wrong. I'm still learning them. Plus, I learn from other people who say their names wrong, so that kind of gets stuck in my head. I don't know what the right way is. I'm going to try Sertain out. We'll see how it fits. Um, Look, we've got some guys in Denver that make me pause a little bit, right? But the fact of the matter is, if, if our future is Ojemudia and Dawson, I don't even know if I'm saying that guy's name right, I don't know that I'm super comfortable with that. And I know fan bases don't like that, right? We got young guys that are promising, how dare you? Look, I just, I don't know. I, 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 how am I supposed to project he's going to be the next hot young cornerback coming up? I don't know that. On top of that, we've got guys like A.J. Boye and Callahan who are talented guys, but... In a perfect world, you let those older, expensive guys walk because we have young talent coming up. If we get a guy like Sertain, we've got a couple other young cornerbacks that are on the come up. It gives us the confidence to say this this is settled. We can let the more expensive guys walk, and we're going to have some good corners moving forward. So it just kind of locks that in place. So Patrick Sertain to the Broncos at 10. With the 11th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select... Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. Um, look, we need defense badly, and I get that, but the offensive line, it's, it, it's like I talk about all the time. You can't keep swinging at something like the defense and allowing one of your strengths to erode. It already has to to a pretty big degree, and I don't know, maybe we want to try to put Martin at tackle to try to solidify the tackle spots, but that leaves a massive void on the interior. So we still, at the end of the day, need to fix this offensive line massively. So, you know, we, we've got some great players, but the areas in which are becoming deficiencies, some of the, the areas in which we don't have elite players, they're pretty bad. 
So if we can get a really good tackle, I feel like that's going to put us in a great position to have two solid tackles and one of the best interior offensive linemen in football. We still got a couple things to figure out, but to at least feel comfortable that we can bring our quarterback in. He's going to be able to throw to a great wide receiver group. We got a great running back. He's going to be able to run a lot better because we have a improved offensive line we can take a couple swings at interior offensive line maybe later in the draft but at the very least we got to do this so um i do want to focus heavily on defense but i want to get this out of the way first and it's critically important that we nail this and there's not you know that many times we're going to be drafting this early to get a premier tackle you do you good you done bugging out um and so I, again it, it's if you don't get a premier tackle in the first round you know, whatever. We can get a defensive tackle later. We can get a linebacker later. We're taking Christian Derisaw. With the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the LA Chargers are going to accept a trade from the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers are going to give up pick 15, as well as pick 108, which is a fourth round pick, and 175, which is a sixth round pick. Um, this we have seen these trades in the past this is the exact compensation that was given up for the eagles to go up and get fletcher cox um so that's what i went with with the 12th overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the san francisco 49ers select celeb farley cornerback virginia tech that's another one i mean his name is clearly caleb but i heard somebody call him celeb so I don't know if I can do that one. It might just be Caleb, man. I, I don't think I can do Celeb. Caleb Farley, cornerback to Virginia Tech. I mean, it, it kind of sucks. I mean, this is one of those situations where I had this one. This was in ink. This wasn't pencil. This was ink. The 49ers taking Caleb Farley, cornerback out of Virginia Tech, right around, you know, close to top 10. If we keep f slipping, right, we're at 15 and whatnot, we're going to miss out. Now, granted, there's other corners, but it's not a super talented corner class. It's not a very deep corner class. We can't be messing around with this, and it is critically important that we get a corner. Um, so with the Chargers kind of calling around because we're not really liking the board as it stands, um, it felt necessary to give up the draft capital. And, and again, it's, it's a middle and a late round pick. It's not great. You don't like giving up picks, but I just felt like it was such a massive need we're going to move up a couple picks and get Caleb Farley. So Caleb Farley, far, not Farty, Farley to the 49ers at 12. With the 13th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Quiddy Pay, edge rusher, Michigan. I don't know how this is going to play with the fan base, but I, I had a couple thoughts. First of all, obviously Wyatt Davis is still available. Um, it's an option. I think a lot of Vikings fans are good with that. Um, However, the offense is working, right? I mean, not to say we can't still get one. We got other rounds to play with interior offensive line. We don't have to do it in the first round. Another thought that I had is, you know, you guys are getting a lot of guys back next year, and I think it's going to be a, a much improved team. I've been saying that all along. Much better team, much better defense. But things have fallen pretty far. I mean, I'm, I just looked at it today. You guys are 29th in points and like 31st in yards. That's that's really bad. For a team that, that has its corners, its safeties, and its linebackers, we think Daniil Hunter and Michael Pierce are going to flip it from being a bottom five to a top five defense. I'm a little concerned. I'm concerned about the safety play, the linebacker play, and these young corners, despite the fact that Cam Dancer is obviously playing out of his mind, real promising looking prospect point is i just want to make sure when we come back next year we come back with the right energy we're going to have daniel hunter and quitty pay firing off the edge that's going to bring the pressure going to help the corners and the safeties and everybody every, everything else is going to kind of fall in line we still got michael pierce obviously coming back but again i want to make absolutely sure i'm not just going to trust hey we get two guys back next year it's going to be great nah we're taking quitty pay we're going to make sure that the the strength of this team is the defense and the elite running back the elite wide receivers that's just a compliment to what we do in minnesota that's sort of my thought process so quitty pay to the vikings at 13. with a 14th overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the new england patriots select Devonte smith wide receiver alabama look i mean it's it's a ridiculous fall for Devontae Smith to make it to 14. He, he is a top 10 talent all day long. The issue is, even when you look at, let's say, the Chargers calling around saying, who wants to move up? I looked at having the Patriots move up for, um, f who do they just draft? Devontae Smith. I'm looking in the wrong spot. Why would they do it? 
First of all, they don't have a lot of picks. Second of all, there's a billion wide receivers. If we miss out on Devontae Smith, we'll get Jalen Waddle. We'll get um, Rashad Bateman. We'll get a wide receiver. I don't need to trade up to get a wide receiver. So it just it, it creates the situation where either you take him or he falls. Nobody's trading up for these guys. So you're going to have wide receivers very likely falling in this draft unless people just pull the trigger and start drafting them. But it's, it creates great opportunities for teams like the Patriots who are sitting at around 14 for some of these top 10 wide receivers to make it right into their lap. That's what happened in this particular mock. Devontae Smith to the Patriots at 14. With the 15th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers back on the clock select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. So, I mean, the, the trade did exactly what it was meant to do. We're going to get a little bit of extra compensation. We'll use those later round picks to, to fill some other needs, probably offensive line, to be completely honest with you, at least one of them. Um, and we still got the, the next guy on, on our list. I mean, the fact is Sam Cosme is falling down the boards a little bit. There was a time where picking him at 12 would have been a great value. Now picking him at 15 is a slight reach. But I feel good about it. Again, we moved back, we got some extra compensation, and we still got the guy we wanted. So Sam Cosme to the Chargers. With the 16th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders are going to accept a trade from the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins are going to give up their third second round pick to move up from 23 to 16. And with the 16th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. So I did this in my last mock, and I really, really liked it. Not only do we get the Alabama wide receiver, but we're doubling up. And, and beyond that, so so for the Raiders, basically the board just didn't look exactly the way we wanted it. We wanted to move back because a little bit later, there's more of a pile of what we like, right? Right now, basically, we can take a wide receiver or a corner. Otherwise, just trade out of the spot. Um, for the Dolphins, and, and, and again, it was a similar situation. I just said nobody's going to trade up for a wide receiver, but... Um, the fact of the matter is, you look at, for example, the Bears, right? So the Raiders are calling around, like, who wants to move up? None of these guys want – picks are a premium. You know, you do these seven-round mock drafts, some of these teams have four or five picks. Even if you have seven, you can't be giving up second-round picks. That just ruins everything, especially for, like, a wide receiver when there's a bunch of them. But I think for the Dolphins, if, if they're willing to take just a second, and we have three second-round picks, and I can give you the Dolphins' natural second-round pick, which is their third second-round pick of the draft – to move up and get Jalen Waddle, so we get two of the top three wide receivers in this entire draft. I mean, it just, I'm good with it, man. I mean, granted, you know, the second round pick has value and we can just stack so much talent, but we're still going to do that. We still have two second round picks and two first round picks next year. I'm good with it. Jalen Waddle to the Dolphins at 16. With the 17th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Arizona Cardinals select. J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. I think the Cardinals are in a similar situation to the 49ers in which we, we not only need to get better, but there's going to be a pretty massive exodus. And I, I don't know who's staying and who's going. If you have some insight into that, drop a comment. Obviously, it's possible some of the older guys are staying, some of the younger guys are leaving. You never know what, what a team's plan is. Um, it depends on your salary cap. It depends on the talent level. It's just a lot of factors, right? Um, but either way, I, I think we need a lot of help here. And with J.C. Horn on the board, I think this is kind of a no-brainer. Um, at this particular point in time, he's a good value. So we're going to pull the trigger. J.C. Horn to the Cardinals at 17. With the 18th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. So, you know, as I mentioned, there's, there's a couple things we're going to need to address moving forward to be able to keep this thing going the way that it is. Um, losing TY is going to be pretty massive, assuming we don't, you know, give him like a one year or something, which we may. Um, but really, it just kind of comes down to value as I look at the needs that we have. I'm not going to take a quarterback. Um, some of the other positions just aren't exactly where I want them to be. And Rashad Bateman is a fantastic value at this particular point in time. So um, we're going to address that need and uh, we'll take Rashad Bateman. With the 19th overall pick, the Washington football team selects Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle, Northwestern. Kind of torn because there are some quarterback options. Uh, Mac Jones is a consideration here. But ultimately, my thought process was he wouldn't be able to thrive in Washington the way that this team is set up right now. Um, it's it, I, I could understand it if, if you wanted to go that route. I mean, you've got some quality 
play at running back. You've got a decent wide receiver. The defense is looking great. I just worry, you know, unless we're getting a premier guy that can overcome some of the hurdles, I think Mac Jones is just the exact wrong guy. Maybe Trask. Maybe Trask makes a little bit more sense being, you know, I don't know, able to kind of overcome some of that stuff. I just feel like Mac Jones needs a little bit more of a, of a system around him. My interpretation of that. So we're going to kind of slow roll this a bit. We're going to be a little bit more responsible. We're going to get a massive need in tackle. Keep building. If, if a quarterback happens to fall, if we get a guy like Mac, maybe in the second, maybe we get lucky and one of these guys falls, cool. Otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll check out free agency and see how that goes. So Rashawn Slater to the Washington football team. With the 20th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. So, I look, I understand the massive need for quarterback, and I tossed and turned on this pick for a very long time, and I, I had even put a quarterback in the spot and took it out. The fact of the matter is they're not a good value right now, and I think a big problem the Bears have had is just overreaching on everybody. I mean, they gave away a ton of draft capital to trade up and get Trubisky. They didn't need to give that all away. They gave away a ton for Khalil Mack. They gave away a ton for Allen Robinson. They keep giving everything away to reach on all these guys because they think this just that one more thing is going to fix it. And, I, I, you know, you look at the offensive line beginning to deteriorate and the defense is even starting to regress. You look at what they've done over the last several years. I mean, they're nowhere near what they were even last year. Um, it just feels like if we reach on a quarterback prospect and think that we can just drop them in the middle of this and it's going to fix everything, I don't think that's the case. I think we're just we're, we're setting ourselves up for another three years of, of not succeeding. We got to just look at the value and, and start being smart about this, respecting our picks. If anything, we, we trade back and, and start to gather up a little bit more picks, build up the offensive line, get some wide receivers. I mean, we got Allen Robinson. And I don't know if he's sticking around. I don't think he's going to. Outside of Robinson, what do we have? So, I mean, we're, we're, we're possibly in teardown and rebuild territory, which is painful when you got a guy like Khalil Mack, but it's getting to that point for me personally. Um, I did actually try to trade back. I couldn't get any takers. So we're just going to stay here. We're going to take Rondale Moore out of Purdue. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars via the LA Rams select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. So this is kind of the, the other big rebuttal to we shouldn't take Trevor Lawrence. Just get a tackle with the second pick, right? I mean, it's, it's easier to get... Uh, Trevor Lawrence and then find a tackle later than to take Penny Sewell and find a Trevor Lawrence later, right? It's just not saying Alex Leatherwood is Penny Sewell, but it's, it's, this is the way to go. We absolutely have to do it. It's urgent that we get a better offensive line, get some wet. I mean, just stack as much as you can around Trevor Lawrence. I don't care about anything else. I couldn't care less if we're a garbage team because our defense is 32nd in the NFL. If we can build an elite offense, I'm good with that. I'm going to stack as much talent as I can around this offense. We'll figure the rest out later. So, Alex Leatherwood to the Jaguars at 21. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Jeremiah Owosu Karamoa, linebacker, Notre Dame. So, I mean, it's kind of a dream come true. I think he's number 17 on our board, falls to 22. Um, we need a linebacker. He's arguably the best in the class outside of uh, Micah Parsons. And um, I don't even know if that's arguable at this particular point in time. Super hyped up, had a great 2020 season in college, and um, I mean, it, it's 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 hard to over-explain this because it's kind of a no-brainer for me. Uh, JOK to the Browns at 22. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders back on the clock select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. I'm assuming the comment section isn't going to love the pick all that much, but I, I mean, come on, man. The average age of your interior offensive line is, what, 36? I mean, it's just, and even some of these guys are, are, are not even necessarily up for contract, but man, I mean, 31, 32, 33 incognitos, what, 30, literally like 36? I was being sarcastic before, but he's really up there. Um, we, we, we just we have to get younger at the position. So I like Wyatt Davis. He's a big nasty football player. I think he's going to fit in real well with the Raiders. It's a great value here at 23, and um, 
you know, I, I understand the need of, of getting defense and, and all the different things, defensive tackle, maybe getting some more help off the edge or whatnot, but it's really just a, a value pick and, again, not allowing things to deteriorate at offensive line because once that happens, we just we, we have nothing. So Wyatt Davis to the Raiders at 23. With the 24th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Terrace Marshall, wide receiver, LSU. I actually considered edge because we're getting into that territory where that's actually a better value right now. And we've got a lot of guys that are up uh, for free agency in 2021 and 2022, I think. Um, but I want to see how they handle that a little bit because I don't know who's staying and who's going. And maybe they're going to keep a bunch of guys and we don't really need that. So uh, I'm going to stick with what I know to be a need at this point, which is wide receiver. Terrace Marshall, big boy out of LSU, obviously got overshadowed by Jamar Chase, but talented wide receiver. Um, and I think a great compliment, again, to Hollywood Brown, who's sort of the smaller, quicker guy to get sort of that big body. Um, I don't know, Allen Robinson is the one guy that comes to mind for some reason, probably because I was just talking about him. Type of wide receiver. Not talking talent-wise, but he's built that way, and who knows? Maybe he will be that way. I don't know. So Terrace Marshall to the Ravens at 24. With the 25th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Zaven Collins, edge rusher, Tulsa. So talk about dream come true. I mean, the, the Titans need edge really, really badly. Um, I've hammered that point in the last several mock drafts, but um, there's sort of that second tier. It's kind of still the first year because there's not that many guys before this but kind of at the back half of the first round at least at this particular point in time there's a pile of edge rushers kind of sitting there and uh, the titans are going to get the first crack at that and with zaven collins being the first guy up we're going to get the the pick of the litter and take zaven collins here um but i mean super talented team they've got a lot going for them uh, I think it's a, a youthful team. A couple question marks in terms of who stays and who goes and whatnot, but man, do they have some potential. The one thing they desperately need that I think is going to hold them back from being a Super Bowl champion in the near future is an edge rusher. If we can hit with a guy like Zayvon Collins, the, the, I mean, there, there's no limit to the potential. So Collins to the Titans at 25. With the 26th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select... Mac Jones, quarterback, Alabama. Now, this is going to be an unpopular pick with the fan base that that obviously at 26 got close to a Super Bowl championship and wants to reload. But, you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is Brady's in the final year of his contract. Now, maybe he resigns, maybe he plays up into his 40s. I have no idea. Or, or 50s, I guess it would be. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but, the, uh, the, the point is, he's not going to be around much longer. We don't even have very many backups left. We have to address the position. I don't want to take one more swing, and then when it doesn't work out, go, well, we literally have no quarterback, and we're picking at 32. So best available quarterback at 32, um, I guess, is our guy. And may maybe you're good with that. Hey, I don't care if we fail for the next five years, ten years, so long as we win a Super Bowl. But that's obviously not a guarantee. So we have to do the prudent thing. Also, beyond that, I think this is a great fit. I mentioned how I think it's a terrible fit to have Mac Jones go to a place like Washington. This is a team that's already got their stuff together. And he's also being talked about as a guy that doesn't necessarily have those elite tools, right? He's not a runner. He doesn't have that big cannon of an arm. He's an efficient quarterback, right? PFF has him graded as, like, one of the best quarterbacks in college football over the last two years. Um, maybe the best. I don't know. But he's got a great system. He's got a great coach. He's got a great scheme. He's got a great offensive line. He's got a great running back. He's got great wide receivers. He's got a lot going for him. So if you're going to take a guy that needs to learn to take those skills, right, a guy that knows how to efficiently execute and distribute the ball where it needs to go, when it needs to go at the right time, there's nobody better in NFL history than Tom Brady at being a guy that underwhelms physically but just dominates with his mind and having enough arm talent to, you know, just be accurate, precise, and intelligent with the football. I think it's a perfect fit, to be completely honest. Um, it's actually very similar to what Jordan Love and the Packers were. I mean, Jordan Love, there's a lot of question marks, a lot of bad fits, but the one great fit was sitting behind Aaron Rodgers and, and Matt LaFleur for a while. I think Mac Jones sitting behind Tom Brady is a perfect scenario for him. So the Bucks are going to capitalize that and take Mac Jones at 26. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. 
again, torn, right? I, that, that first pick, I'm not really sure. But once we decided we're going quarterback, we've got to build this out. Whether it's offensive line, tight end, wide receiver, running back, whatever. I don't care. But we have to get the most bang for our buck in terms of improving the offensive line and taking some pressure off of our brand spank and new quarterback. Um, and so, I, you know, the other thing is, who do you take? I think Friar Muth was an option here at tight end. I know he's not super popular, but it was an option. Um, there's other wide receivers like Amon Ross St. Brown that you can consider. But I went with the highest guy on the board that is going to be a weapon to help our quarterback out, and that's Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. With the 28th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle, Michigan. I, I don't know what to say about the Steelers, man. I, I would love for some Steelers fans to jump in the comments and just tell me, what is, what is, in your opinion, the best way to turn this around quickly? I mean, you could maybe just say quarterback, right? Go get Trask, put him in there, and maybe just things turn around. But watching how the offensive line has performed, watching how the running backs and the wide receivers especially have performed, it has imploded to a level that I don't know that I've ever seen. For an undefeated team to be this bad, I don't know, man. So, again, jump in the comments, but I'm, I'm kind of just looking at this as we got to rebuild this thing, and I think taking an offensive tackle here is um, – everything else feels like a Band-Aid, right? Outside of taking Trask, obviously, is not a Band-Aid. That's a pretty big step. But then you worry about what happens if, if you know, he gets put behind a bad offensive line with no weapons. So I, I feel like the next best thing is to just – to just again just rebuild this offense which is unbelievable it's so painful how many times have we seen this where elite defenses just have offenses that can't compete i thought the steelers were going to be that team that had a at least a complementary offense and that's falling apart the bears the jaguars so many teams with these dominant defenses that just have unbelievably incompetent offenses that ruin super bowl aspirations so i obviously you could still win a super bowl i'm not saying you can't but the way you guys are playing now zero chance and we just have to tear it down and rebuild it which is painful to even have to say but uh, Jalen Mayfield to the Steelers at 28. With the 29th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft the New Orleans Saints select Kyle Trask quarterback Florida. So the Saints lucked out with the Steelers opting not to take a quarterback. Um, I mean again this is somewhat of a no-brainer kind of a situation. I think the Steelers or the excuse me the Saints are honestly one of the the teams that scare me the most i mean the bills are white hot right now the saints i think are are underrated in terms of their talent the, the one thing that's that's iffy with the saints is the inconsistent play from drew Brees. so um this one's this one's easy for me i mean the defense is really really stepping up i mean the the, the strides that the saints have made historically bad defenses for the saints um to finally have that at the same time that the offense is playing at a, at a level that even for the saints is quite a high level um, I mean, again, it's, it's fairly obvious what we have to do here. We're going all in this year with Drew Brees and the Saints trying to win a Super Bowl. Next year, we're, we're picking right up where we left off. It's going to, you know, there's going to be some hiccups, but if, if Trask can even be a competent quarterback, we got a great shot. I mean, he, and he's so talented, the things that he can do. Obviously, there's question marks or he'd be a top five quarterback as well. But man, we've got a, a great, a great place for a quarterback to be. I mean, what, what a better situation than to have a dominant wide receiver and a guy like Kamara and, and you know I mean it's not a perfect offense but there's plenty here in the scheme and the coach and the the it's just a put together organization and um, I'm excited to bring Kyle Trask in the building and see if we can just continue this reign of, of I don't want to say dominance because they, they haven't asserted that enough to even get in the Super Bowl but there's no question the talent is there and if we can just keep that quarterback at a, at a relatively high level we're going to get there. So Kyle Trask to the Saints. With the 30th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Joseph Asai, edge rusher, Texas. Um, I mentioned the Buffalo Bills being one of the scarier teams in football, and the reason that is is because the offense and defense are finally starting to click together, right? The Saints, the Packers, the Bills, these are teams that – you know, the offense is staying stoked and the defense is starting to step up. And now you've got these two dominant sides. So I, I fully acknowledge that the defense is not what it was at the start of the season. But still, one of the biggest weapons you have is a, what, 35-year-old pass rusher. Um, that's not, it's not only is it not enough, but we got to replace the guy. So, you know, again, it's, it's everything is, is playing at a very high level right now. Quarterback, wide receiver, I mean, things are just clicking. Um 
We just got to keep that fire stoked. And I think getting an edge rusher to come in and, and keep the pressure on opposing quarterbacks with the talent we have at DB and whatnot, um, that's going to be the biggest thing in my mind is making sure that we, we don't become the, t- the Tennessee Titans, essentially, a team that has kind of everything we need. We just don't have any pass rush because that'll ruin you. So we're not going to let that happen. We're taking Joseph Asai at 30 for the Buffalo Bills. With the 31st overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Pat Fryermuth, tight end, Penn State. Packer fans aren't going to like it, but I don't care. Um, look, a couple things. First of all, getting Aaron Rodgers additional weapons on this offense, that's already right now the number one offense in football. Um, yes, please. Um, additionally, I think a lot of people look at wide receiver, and I understand it, but... I don't know that the tight end thing is 100% solidified. Jay Sternberger has shown not very much. Robert Tunyon is impressive, but first of all, he's a free agent. There's no guarantee that they're going to pay him a bunch of money to come back. The Packers have no money. Um, They're one of the, I mean, $25 million over the cap right now. They got to figure out how to navigate. So if he's worth any amount of money, they can't pay him. Beyond that, how much of his success has to do with Matt LaFleur, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, the system and all the other attention that that teams have to play. In other words, who's to say that a guy like Pat Fryermuth, who is a much better athlete than Tanyan, can't come in and even be better? Um, The final objection would probably be DeGuara, who I'm a big fan of, who went out this year. But again, that's somewhat of a different position. Um, You know, he's going to be more of that H-back role. He's going to be playing a lot of fullback, inline type stuff whereas Friar Muth can be sort of the inline slash split out tight end. So um, I think with this, there's a good chance that we do let Tanyan walk. I think Mercedes Lewis is going to walk, and we move forward with Pat Friar Muth being sort of that uh, receiving weapon that's going to stress the tight ends, or uh, excuse me, the linebackers, and uh, DeGuara comes in as sort of the H-back with Jace kind of flailing a bit, I think. And if he succeeds, he succeeds, but... Um, Again, I think this would be one of those unlikely picks that shocks a lot of people that that nobody really expects. But to me, it makes a lot of sense. And I I think it's uh, something to get excited about. So Pat Fryermuth to the Packers at 31. Finally, with the 32nd overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs select Trey Smith, offensive guard, Tennessee. I, I, I tend to get a good amount of pushback when I do offensive line for the – the problem with teams that are really, really good, especially at the back half of the draft, um, is the fact that a lot of things are very good, and anytime you draft somebody, people get offended as though you're insulting the, the unit or whatever. Look, Wiley, Osemele, Wisniewski, Reeder, Kilgore, Remmers, they're free agents in 2020. Uh, Duvernay – is a free agent after 2020 on top of Schwartz, Fisher, and Rankin are in the final years of their contracts in 2021. And I acknowledge, well, some of these guys are going to get repaid. So what? First of all, that puts a massive financial strain. And beyond that, a lot of these guys are not coming back. The only guys that are locked up long-term on this offensive line, Yang, Allegretti, and Durant. That's it. We have to address the offensive line. I know you don't want to, but we have to, especially the interior, because almost all of those guys are free agents after 2020 right 2020 by the time the draft happens these guys might already be gone so we're going to invest a lot of money just keeping these guys and we still need to draft some so um it is critically important i know it's not a sexy pick and i know when you're a super bowl champion you want to come back and get an elite wide receiver and really just attack this thing and and you know look back-to-back super bowl champions at some point you get to the point where it's like we're just we need to keep things level We're, we're not getting better we're already the best we just need to keep from from deteriorating so we'll get a wide receiver we'll get some other positions but um at this point in time given the board the way it's stacked up we're taking interior offensive line for the chiefs at 32.